Hey everyone, how you doing? So in this video, we're going to look at basically totem poles and what they represent. And it's a totem pole video. So uh, in a forthcoming video, we're going to look at primitive art around your home because you have more than you think. They're all based on ancient themes. So what is a totem pole and how does it work? By the end of this video, you'll learn how to interpret totem poles and explain them and you'll see what they really are. Now, these two, I think, are Balinese. Um, I picked them up last year. You know, I love to collect primitive art. It's very nice. Now, what do you see? Well, there are a couple things we see in these. Firstly, it's a triple god of sorts. And so it's a very primitive religion from pre-3000 BC or pre-2000 BC. The triple god religion ended pretty much in the old world around about 2000 BC, about the time they stopped building the pyramids, which, by the way, was a major clue for me when I wrote my book on the pyramids about what religion they represented. But anyway, look at this guy down here. This guy is bigger than these two. And what we're actually seeing here is the same thing we see in the 11,000-year-old Shigir idol from Russia, Siberia. It's the same thing, which, which, by the way, gave rise to inspiration of the Pacific Northwest totem poles. It's the same thing we see in the Svetovid totem pole, which was found in what is now Ukraine about 100 years ago in the 1920s. And that idol also has a giant figure on the bottom. What is going on? Why is there a giant on the bottom? There's something normal in the middle. And then there's something with a, extra, a bit of extra on top. I'll tell you what's going on. That's Asgard. That's the god. That's Middle-earth. That's the giant, the fallen giant, the fallen astronaut, Loki, under the world, the underworld giant, basically Bud. And you see this on so many representations. Now, you look up Wikipedia, it says a totem pole is something found in the Pacific Northwest states of USA and Canada. Um, they might have got that tradition um, from uh, the, the, the massive Shigir idol, but the same tradition was throughout the world. If we look at primitive Stonehenge, before there was Stonehenge built, there were totem poles there apparently in 9000 BC. Now, but we see the same representation in so many different totem poles. The ones in the Pacific Northwest, very different, but we're going to look at those in a moment. So just to recap, we have the giant of the underworld, we have the human of Middle-earth, and then we have the god of Asgard. Imagine three dinner plates. This is their representation of the world, and this is why, for example, hills were sacred in ancient times, because when you, you're in Middle-earth and then you climb a hill, where are you? You're with the gods in heaven. And these are uh, one reason why hills were sacred and mountains were sacred in ancient times, mountains of the gods. Hey Pipskis, how are you doing? By the way, this composer is called uh, Vassina, very interesting. I never heard of him and I bought this one and I thought, wow. But he never wrote anything else because he was too busy being a diplomat, but he would have been one of the good ones of the Baroque. Now, here I have a Balinese chess set from the same part of the world that those totem poles are from. And you will be saying, hey Chucky, they look a bit weird because when we look at stuff like this, um, it's... Quite obviously like something like that's American Indian. And you look at stuff like this, it really is very American Indian. It's got the wings. I hope that focuses. I hope it focuses. And it's got a hierarchy. Now, the ones in America, Pacific Northwest, those are classic totem poles. Totem poles are all around the world, but if you look up Wikipedia, it only shows you the Pacific Northwest. Now, <clears throat> this, let's have a look. Do you see? The face. There are three. There are three. There are three faces. It better focus. There are three faces. Geryon had three faces in Greek mythology. So before Zeus, there was this great warrior called Geryon, a giant, and he must have been the triple god long before Zeus. We're talking prior to 2000 BC, which is when this triple religion died out, except in Italy, where the Trinity uh, continued into the Catholic Church. Uh, because it was so special, but what we see in the Pacific Northwest, we see the same um, creatures as we see, um, like eagles and th hawks and things like that, and monkeys and baboons, as we see at Nazca. And it's sort of like a pantheon, a hierarchy. 
So the wings at the top and the log creatures down the bottom. Here, this is a triple god. A winged triple god. Gerion in Greek mythology was a winged triple god who was a good fighter. He had six arms, very similar to Hindu mythology uh, as well. And that's, that's the origin of the totem pole. Now what's this monster thing down below, below him? Or it's part of him in a way. It's, it's really interesting. Um, right there. I don't know. It, it looks like a, maybe it's an underworld dragon, an underworld serpent. Maybe it's Loki down below. The giant down below. And they always put the giant down below. The monster, the creature, the Satan, the whatever. And the god up the top. So the monster below, the god up the top. The monster fell to earth. He was bad. He gave people knowledge and religion. The triple god up there is good. He gave people temple and said, worship me. Other things in the chess set, the dragons are, are very interesting. The dragons are the horses um, and, and the demons and the, 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 the pawns and the rooks are just demons. Again, the, maybe the underworld demons. But that's a Balinese chess set. And uh, here's like a, uh, like a, some kind of even more like a demonic witch doctor or something. You know, it's like, uh, it's like that, you know. But yeah, there you go. Like, um, that's how it works. Now, people. So, blokes and dolls, it gets more interesting. And you're not, you're not hearing this from anyone else. You're just hearing it from me. So what's happening is um, we have statues in the Maya world with huge ears. And these statues, they have massive ears almost as big as a face. So what does that mean? It means it's a, a, a corruption, a descendant of the triple godhead. And these huge ears, you see, are the extra faces. And it gets more interesting because the Easter Island statues descend from these Mayan Peruvian totem poles. Now we made a video saying that like, why are the, what, because a, a patron said to me, why are the faces so long? And I said, well, it's from, they're, 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 they're Neanderthals, right? They have a huge jaw. But the other reason is they're totem poles. That's why the faces are long. So what's happening is essentially, um, they have huge ears, and those huge ears descend from the huge ears in the Mayan, uh, the Mayan reliefs. So they're the extra faces, and that might be why they elongated their ears to be like the gods, like the triple god, like those statues, because that was significant. Now we got more. The Pakal sarcophagus lid is very interesting because that shows a kind of totem pole because the tree, a tree is the original totem pole, the Irminzul in Germany. So what's going on with that is we have three branches coming out of that world tree that Mr. Pakal is hanging from or whatever, or he's, it's a rocket ship or whatever. And so that's the triple face, the triple god, which is in the form of a tree because uh, the female triple goddess was around, uh, associated with a tree and pouring water. So, and then we got even more because down below... Uh, we have the world serpent underneath that, or, or the serpent, or Loki, or whatever. And the, the, we have, you have that face that uh, von Däniken says is a rocket engine. So, and, and it could be, who knows. But that is how you would interpret that. So, it, it, and you're not hearing this anywhere else. You're just hearing it here, because no one knows how to read this. You look in the old books uh, about primitive art, and it just says, oh, fetish, totem pole, uh, mana. They don't know anything. Yeah. But anyway, there you go. What do you think of that? Peeps. Well, I've actually noticed that this too <laughs> is actually a totem pole and I'm going to interpret it in a second so we can understand because this is a predecessor to the Pacific Northwest totem poles. Now it's made for tourists, like kind of like that thing up there, as you might recognize, it's made for tourists. Um, on the back, it simply says, it simply says that. So let's interpret it. Now, this is older than the Pacific Northwest totem poles, but it gives amazing clues because there's a bird on top. Now, there is a male triple god and there is a female triple god. The female triple god is more associated with the tree of Eden than the male triple god. The male triple god is more about the technology, the Loki, the underworld giant, the god in the sky. The female triple god is all about the tree of Eden. So this is green, like a tree. It's like a green man. And instead of the three branches that we see at Pakal Sarcophagus, we see something that looks almost like a boar or, or, or an owl. I don't know what that is. 
And then there's two. It's as if the again the, the it's like the three branches or the or the or the two huge earlobes. But here we don't know what they are. They could they look like pine cones almost or something. Well, there it's wings, but then there's another bird on top. So clearly totem pole, three levels. So Bud, the underworld giant. And here is basically the tree with the foliage and the fruit of Eden. And then um, there is a bird perched on top of the tree. The reason there's a bird on top is these huge totem poles that you see in the northwest are essentially irminsals or trees, the tree, the original world tree of Eden. So... That's just what's going on here. Um, we see something similar here with the, with the Egypt. Again, you have the tree and the, the sun on top of uh, some goddess. Quite interesting. Quite interesting. So, so that's what's going on here. The tree perched. So we have the bird on uh, in some Eden story variants of the Eden story. There's a bird on top of the tree, and the triple the triple deities there. And then the underworld, there's the ground level, and there's the underworld technology giant. Quite interesting. But in the Stone Age wor- world, if you see birds, we're talking female goddess. Um, I've got a few books on Amazon. Um, I'm going into different businesses, workshops and stuff. Public speaking is easier than you think. It is. Success is easier than you think. It really is. The best success principle I can give you right now is don't rely on anyone. Only you will get you to where you need to be. Just do it yourself. Um, ancient Egyptian spells not to try at home. I edited this. It doesn't have my name on it. I called myself Alistair Blackwell, but I supplied a spell index uh, at the front. So there's a, a spell index um, here, yeah, and uh, you can look up spells. Before there was only like a, like speed, talisman, thief, to blind a thief, invoke soul of thief, words of power. It's even got magical lamps and stuff like that. So check that out, I might make a video on that actually, but um, before it just had a geography, politic, place name index, it was rubbish. So check those out on Amazon guys, I hope you have a wonderful day, I hope it hasn't cut my head off. Uh, cheers, woo! Yes!